Hey folks, this is going to be a short video on section 8.8 .8 that deals with parametric equations and parametric functions. This is really just a very, very brief introduction to parametrics. So um, this is, we're going to keep this very basic. Um, a parametric curve is a set of points x, y such that x equals f of t and y equals g of t. F and G are both defined on a certain interval. Um, the equations X and Y are parametric equations with the parameter of T. So frequently, um, when, when uh, story problems are involved in parametrics, frequently you will have um, a, co a component of time. Um, but again, this is very, very basic. All right, so let's take a look at example one. Uh, we've got x equaling t squared minus one, y equals t minus two. t is in the interval from negative three to three, so it cannot go outside of that interval. And then we're gonna be asked to graph the set of ordered pairs for x, y. All right, so what I've done is I've made a list of all of the t values um, I should say all of the pretty t values. I didn't include things like 1.1 um, or anything like that. So the pretty t values. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these t values and I'm going to plug it in for the t's up here in our equations to be able to get my x's and my y's. All right, so if I'm focused on the x equation, um, negative 3 squared minus 1 is going to be 9 minus 1, which is 8. Um, negative 2 squared minus 1 is going to be 3. Negative 1 squared minus 1 is going to be 0, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to walk you through all of that, but here's going to be a list of all of the x values. Let's do the same thing for our y equation. And so we have, um, let's see, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, and 1. All right, so um, what we've got here then um, is a list of uh, coordinates or ordered pairs. So I'm going to graph 8, negative 5. I'm going to graph ne 3, negative 4. And so when we come over here to um, our graph, uh, 8, negative 5 is down here, and 3, negative 4 is here, 0, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 3, 0, and 8, 1. And what I have, it appears, is going to be a sideways parabola. Now, here's what's different. Notice that I did not continue my parabola in this direction with an arrow. And the reason for that is my t's were restricted. And so once t ends um, at negative 3 on the top side and at, and at 3 on the bottom side, once t ends, you cannot go any further than that. So my parabola does have an ending value here. All right, so then what I'm asked to do with the exact same set of equations that I had right here, I'm asked to find a rectangular equation. Remember rectangular? Sorry about that. Rectangular means it's going to be just in x's and y's for example one's um, curve. All right, so here's how you're going to do this. Take one of your equations and solve for t. Since it would be easier to solve this one for t, I'm going to go ahead and just solve for t, which is going to be y plus 2. And then what you'll do is you'll take your t and you're going to plug that in for the other equation for wherever t landed. And so that's going to be x is equal to my t, which is now y plus 2, quantity squared minus 1. And um, since this is asking for a, a rectangular equation, normally we solve for y. And so um, we would have uh, x plus 1 is equal to y plus 2 quantity squared. In this case, um, instead of solving for y, I'm just going to leave it like this because this is the standard form that we worked with back in chapter 10. Um, if you remember the very first chapter that we covered in our course, um, this is the standard form of that equation. So I'm, I'm going to leave it alone here. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and 
Um, give myself a range of values for my X's and my Y's. Now I'm going to uncover this, but then I'm going to show you where I got this. All of my X's need to land from negative 1 to positive 8. And um, you notice here that that's exactly what we have here. My smallest value or my lowest value is negative 1. My highest value is positive 8. All of my Y's land from negative 5 to positive 1, and I get that right here. So this wasn't any new math I did. This is something that I had already done, but all of my X's will lie in this restriction. All of my Y's will land in this restriction here. All right, um, example number three. So same concept here. Now we have um, our uh, X is equal to 4 cosine T, our Y is equal to 2 sine T, and my restricted values are from 0 to 2 pi. So you notice um, I have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I just use the my quadrant um, values here. And I'm going to plug each of those T values in, and then let's see what we get. So for my X equation, 4 times cosine of 0 is 4 because cosine of 0 is 1. Um, here, 4 times the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, etc., etc. You can take the time to, um, to plot each one, or not plot, but to plug each one of those in. And then for my y's, go ahead and uncover those. Um, 2 times the sine of 0 is 0. 2 times the sine of pi over 2 is 2 times 1, which is 2, etc., etc. So now we can go ahead and plug in our coordinates. So we have 4, 0, 0, 2, negative 4, 0, 0, negative 2, and then back to 4, 0. And this ends up being an ellipse. Again, one of those things that we had um, talked about um, back in chapter 10, the very first chapter that we covered in this course. All right, folks, that's um, all that we're going to cover as far as parametrics are concerned. Like I said, this is just a very, very brief introduction to um, parametric equations.